What's going on guys welcome back to another episode of rustle mod in this episode we're going to try to get this mercury montclair up and running and driving in this episode so follow along so we can see if this thing actually drives on the road in the last episode you saw us clean the interior out and get this thing running and driving for the first time in many years so now we're going to try to work on getting brakes getting fuel and getting this thing road worthy so we can get this thing back on the road after sitting for many years. We found this thing in a swap meet all torn apart. We ended up putting the entire thing back together and now we're gonna try to get it back on the road. We got tags and registration for it so we should be good to go to actually drive this thing. So pretty excited. Hopefully we can get the fuel system and everything else dialed in on this car. So stay tuned and we'll see how far we can get. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do on this, now that we got it running, is we're going to fix the brakes on this. So there was no brake fluid in this master cylinder when we got it. There's some parts for some wheel cylinders in it, so I assume the wheel cylinders are bad. So while we go ahead and change all of those, we're going to upgrade our master cylinder from a single bowl master cylinder to two. And that way we have a reservoir for the front and the back brakes in case one of them fails you will have at least front or back brakes to be able to stop the vehicle, unlike you do with a single pot master cylinder. So we're going to put this on. This is actually out of a 67 Mustang and it apparently will be able to bolt right up to our firewall. So I just popped this out real quick and then I'm gonna pop this one in, gonna bleed the master cylinder first, pop it in and it should be good to go with upgrading the brakes. That way we can have a modern master cylinder in this thing also so we'll get ready to bleed this thing throw it in and then we can hook up all the lines and bleed the brakes all right got the brake lines hooked up we ended up teeing them together down there where they come to a block teeing those two together for the front and then just extending the line for the back. So we got those hooked together, got our brake switch in there as well. Now we have a dual master cylinder on this and it'll definitely help in the long run with braking if we have any issues like that. So that should be good. So now we just gotta bleed them and see if any of the wheel cylinders are bad, which hopefully the guy ended up changing them not we'll have to change the wheel cylinders and then we should be able to drive this once we get our new gas tank in so on the new elderbrock intake manifold that we installed there's no port to add oil to the motor or have a breather so we had to drill a hole into one of the valve covers to be able to put a breather in there so that way we can add oil to it so the motor has a vent now I didn't really want to drill a hole into the original valve covers, but I think this is probably the only way that you can do it without drilling a hole into the intake manifold or getting a different intake manifold. So that's how we did it. All right, guys. So I just installed the new ignition switch. The other one, you would turn it to run and then it would die. You turn it, it would crank, fire, and then it would die. So I got a new switch, installed it. So let's see if this thing works. So that ignition key works. Yay. First time in probably 40 years this thing has been back on the road. Pretty cool. Sounds great. 
runs really good. Definitely need some headlights. Parking lights, lottery. <laughs> Did it shift? I think so. There it went. This thing drives nice. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely need to re bleed the brakes. I haven't, uh... Fire steering, I don't know if that's working or... Uh-huh. I don't know if the fire steering's working or what. It's first drive worked pretty good. So, now I guess we gotta get the gas tank in so we don't have that. And rebuild the fuel pump. Probably bleed the brakes again, but looks like it's running and driving pretty good. All right, guys, well, I got the Mercury here up on the lift, and this is actually the first time I'm putting it up on the lift. I really haven't seen too much underneath of the car, except for on the ground and stuff. For what I can see, it looks very solid, but I'm excited to put it up on the lift, and hopefully we can get this fuel tank out so we don't have to run our electric fuel pump and our sketchy boat tank in the passenger seat set up. We can actually get some gas in this thing and drive it on the actual road instead of just driving it around our little block here. So we'll put this thing up and we'll see what it looks like underneath. All right, looking underneath this thing for the first time, definitely some power steering leaking. Um, definitely has some oil leaks and stuff, but no major rust. You can see the floors look pretty good. This floor looks pretty good. Some surface rust and stuff, but it still has the original undercoating on it. So everything looks pretty solid under here. I did notice there was a puddle from this pinion seal leaking. So we're gonna have to address that at some point. But yeah, guys, this thing is pretty good shape. I would say for as old as it is, 1964. So all the rockers look really good from underneath. So the only thing I did notice was up here, these body mounts are rusted on the back, on both sides, I believe. Yep, this one is as well. But other than that, I think that's probably the worst spot on this whole car. And that doesn't look like too bad of a fix. So now we gotta start pulling this gas tank out to be able to get the new one in and hopefully that shouldn't be too bad so that way we can get some fresh fuel in this thing and actually drive this thing on the road so i'll unbox a new gas tank and we'll see how it looks All right, so we got the old gas tank out. Definitely some very old gas in there. And then we got the new gas tank here. So Looks this insane. one I got from, the only one I could find was from a Galaxy, but I think that it's pretty much the same. There's a little bit of difference, but like it looks like the spout is at a different angle, but we can probably cut it and make it work. So gotta get that figured out but it looks like the general shape is the same. The sending unit looks like it's in the same spot. So here's the underneath. It's like brand new metal under there. Pretty crazy. Never seen daylight in a hundred years. So <laughs> pretty cool. But now we can uh, switch everything over from this tank to this tank, figure out what we're gonna do about that and then put it back in. There's the one that is the old one and that's the new one. So we gotta take the sending unit from the old one which has this return line, kind of weird, and then put it in there. So I'm gonna pop this thing off real quick. That was pretty good actually. Yeah, way better than this. Oh. 
Oh, oh my god. Holy crap. Oh, that's why we're replacing the tank. Dang. I don't think that setting unit works. <laughs> Look, there's no even there's there's no float, float on, on there. <laughs> Dang, that sucks. Ooh. Giddy. Dude, that's the little filter. <laughs> Uh, That's really bad, huh? Well, you might want to get a. Let me Google this. Yep. Yeah. Wow, looks like it was on a U boat or something. Dude, it literally looks like it's underwater. Oh, probably out of water, I guess. <laughs> Is there a turn line? Just think. Huh. Alright, I'll, I'll look up another one. <laughs> yeah. Be right back. Several days later. All right, we're back in the shop. Last clip you saw, I ended up pulling the gas tank out of the Mercury because our sending unit was all rusted. So I got the new gas tank here. You can see I had to cut and re-weld this at a different angle so it fits into the Mercury fuel cell. This is out of a Galaxy. And I ended up buying a new sending unit. So now it should all be new. The other one was really rusted, so going to put that in the mercury and then i should be able to run a fuel line and our fuel system should all be brand new so i'm going to try to put this stuff in and hopefully we could finally drive this thing on the road i've had it for so long i have tags and everything for it i haven't been able to drive it on the road yet i also got some wheels and tires for it too so while it's up on the lift we could try to put those on too all right so now i just got to put the gas tank in there, measure for the filler neck, and run some fuel lines. So let's get to it. All right, so here's kind of the dilemma. So see how far back the filler neck is? So on the galaxies, I guess the body of these are a lot shorter and the filler neck is a lot taller of an angle. So I'm gonna have to probably cut that filler neck and then it, it's gonna have to extend so I can get the pump nozzle in there. So not too big of a deal because I have the old one. So I'll just cut the rubber thing off of that, slot it on the end of that one, and it should be good to go. But the gas tank fits in there really nice. So if you guys are looking for a gas tank for this, just know you have to modify the filler neck a little bit, but the gas tank's the same shape and fits right in the place of the old one. So I just extended the filler neck out to reach that cap up there, so now I'm going to put it in, hopefully for the last time. Alright, so now pull it open, it's the right length, and that is it for the gas tank. So now I could just run for some gas lines to my fuel pump. So if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I really like old body cars, but I really like them a little bit lowered and pretty simple and I like just steel wheels. So originally this car has 14 inch steel wheels on it and I really wanted to kind of maintain the look cause I like the way that these look originally, but I want to be a little bit different and a little bit bigger. So I didn't want to go too crazy with this thing and I just wanted to add a little bit more modern to have a little bit bigger of a steel wheel on it. So I went with these US wheels and these are a 17 and it's really kind of hard to fit wheels on these things because you can see how close the bumper is to the tire. So this is gonna be lowered a little bit, but I went with a 17 by eight inch wide. That's pretty much about as wide as I could go on the front. Now the back, I only mounted two of these cause I probably could have fit a 10 inch wide on the back. So I'm not really sure if I'm gonna keep the eight inches because you can see how much more room I can still fit under there or go with a 10 inch. But I'm not really sure how low I'm gonna go with it yet. So if I go lower, I'll probably keep the eight inch. If I don't, then I'll probably go with the 10 inch, make it a little bit more wider in the back, but quite a bit of room for tire on the back of this car. So it's kind of hard to see it right now, obviously, because it's still in the lift. But when I get all four of them on, I'll roll it out and uh, we can see what this thing looks like. I got my fuel line all hooked up there. I just ran a rubber hose up there because these lines were filled with dirt. So nice and easy. 
So now I'm gonna go and we're gonna lower the back two inches. So I got some lowering blocks, just gonna throw in here real quick. Should be pretty easy. Just undo the U-bolts on both sides and then put the block in and then I'm gonna drop it down and see what it looks like. Really wanna see what that looks like before I try and make up my mind on the rear wheels. So I'll throw that in real quick and then lower it down see what it looks like. All right, so we got the U-bolt off. So I'm just raising the rear up and then we can start block. All right, a little bit of a challenge, but I got both the two inch lowering blocks in. So I just gotta lower it down. Might have to get shocked, I'm not sure. And then we'll see what it looks like. All right, we're gonna lower it down. So, moment of truth here, see what it looks like. And yeah, that's a lot, that's a lot lower. I think it's still going. Two inches, it seems like way more than two inches. That looks way better. You can kind of see the front for reference, but it's kind of hard to tell obviously because it is uh, on the lift still, but that's a lot better. All right, decided to just put the other two wheels on so we can get the full look, but I lowered it down. So it's got all four corners on and only the back is lowered right now. I'm trying to figure out a way that I can just get the front a little lower so it can match the back real quick. And then I'll probably be done with the full thing until I get a proper front suspension for this. So that's what it looks like so far. Let me pull it out and we can get a better look at it. All right, got it pulled in here and you guys can see kind of the look that we're going for. So that's what it looks like now. Obviously the back is a lot lower than the front. So I'm gonna have to figure out a way to lower the front, but as of now, that's the look we have. So definitely really happy with these wheels. I think they look pretty good. All right, figure out how to lower the front of this. We actually ended up just heating up the spring for now, and then it actually sagged the front two inches down, and then that meets the back, the two inch block that we put in there. I also ended up just getting some hubcaps for it to make it pop a little bit, kind of add some depth to the wheel. So we got the front meeting the back. Now we got the wheels and stuff on the Mercury. I wanted to clean it. So whenever we get everything together, it will look really good. So we're gonna do that with the help of the Sweet Patina polish that they sent us. So if you guys are interested in this kind of polish, kind of for older paint like this, uh, go down the link below and use our promo code in the description and you can get a discount off of your order from Sweet Patina. So they sell this polish there and apparently it's supposed to work good with old paint like it has on the Mercury. So we're gonna try it out and see what it looks like. I'm also gonna get some SOS pads and clean up the chrome on the front bumper. So we're gonna see how that looks also. You can kind of see up close all the pitting and how bad this back bumper is just like the front. So hopefully we can do the SOS pad trick and uh, 
should shine just like the front did. Pretty cool. Check out the difference from that to that. You can't even see my reflection in that. And look, you can pretty much see my entire reflection in that bumper. Pretty cool. This thing cleans up really nice. It's probably the nicest car we've ever had on a Rusto mod. <laughs> Not really much of a Rusto mod, I would say. But it's pretty sweet. Guys, that's gonna do it for this episode on the Mercury. We did a huge transformation on this Mercury. I know it was a long episode, but we pretty much took this car that we found in a swap meet that has been sitting off the road since the 80s and pretty much converted it to my daily driver. I actually drive this thing on the road, runs and drives really good. So I just wanna show you guys how we transformed this car in a few short days of just wrenching on this thing, cleaning it up, and it turned out really, really nice. So make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe so you can see more episodes like this. And we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thanks for watching.